As you have seen, we just shared with you our report for annual conference. It certainly was much more exciting than it would have been if Joe and I had stood up here droning on about the long lines at the dinner at going to dinner and how either cold or hot the venue was. So that will be posted on the Facebook page and on the web page if you would like to find out more about um, what happened at annual conference this year. Hang on a second, I'm going to get us going, get me going. There we go. Thank you for being with us today for worship, however you are joining us. Leading in the service today, we have Joe Stewart, our worship and song leader, Bev Griffith, our director of music, Trish, our director of family and children's ministry, and our Facebook guru for Sunday morning, the tech crew of George Jenks, Billy and Chris Johnson, our acolyte, James, our usher, Tom O'Brien, and Pam, our percussionist who is also a proud grandma of James. McKaylin was going to sing today, but she was not feeling well and did what we all ask and stayed home. So um, that's who you have leading you today. We invite you all to sign in on the black pads found in the pews. If you are watching us online, please let us know that you are here. And now may we listen as we prepare ourselves for worship. Bev, wait a minute, please. As the bell rings out, summoning people, not only to worship, but to God, I would like to share something that popped up in my Facebook memories today from about six, seven, eight years ago. I was describing the outside of my house in Lawrenceburg. The flower beds are filled with colorful lilies Soon the daisies will be blooming and the roses continue flashing us with color. Yellow, orange, white, deep plum, bright green, pink, dark green. The yard is a wheel of colors that complement and fight each other and bring both harmony and dissonance to the view out my window. Thank you for the clarity and diversity of your world. May we learn to recognize, find, celeb and celebrate the harmony and embrace the dissonance. Many decisions were made this week in the life of our country. Some of us agree with them, some of us do not. Some of us are filled with joy, others are filled with sorrow. We say we shouldn't mix religion and politics, and I'm not. But if we have those same feelings here in our congregation, then so do we on Franklin Street and Pine Street and 7th Street, at City Hall, in Indianapolis, in Chicago. As the church, we are called to be the church for all people, whether we agree or whether we do not. John Wesley called, said it this way, we may not think alike, but may we love alike. So during this time of national discord, I invite us to love alike. May we prepare for worship.
The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. If we are to take that seriously, we are left with these challenging questions. What does that transformation look like? What does the kingdom of God look like? What does home look like? Home is a recurring theme in the Bible and in worship. The call to come home, the desire to go home, feeling a sense of home, all strike at the heart of who we are as human beings. This is why we return again and again to these themes. However, as with most things, Jesus is inviting us to think differently about home and what it means to be at home, not so much the warm and cozy hearth and home, but the relationships and commitments that we have within the human community. Please join us in our threshold song. He has done marvelous things, singing, and if you wish, spinning your ribbons. Since we have done this for a while, you may join in whenever you wish, and we will sing until Bev decides to stop. like to share something with you about that song. How many of you have been outside walking and you hear a bird go? It's a blue jay. But whenever you're out walking, if you hear that, do-do-do, do-do-do, remember that God is marvelous and to praise God. And now that the choir has sat down, if you would rise in body or spirit for our call to worship, it can be found printed uh, in your bulletins or on the monitors. God is a God who calls. We have gathered to worship and to hear that call. God is a God who equips. We are here to worship and to be shaped into the body of Christ. God is a God who sends. We are here to worship so that we can carry that spirit of worship out into the world where we live. God is a God who blesses. We are here to worship and to request a double share of that blessing. We are here to worship. Oh, I'm sorry. Let us worship God. Amen. And if you would remain standing for our opening hymn, it can be found uh, 
in your ham or your in your hymnals number 344 or lyrics on the monitors lord you have come to the lake shore number 344 You may be seated, and I invite Ms. Trish. Anyone who wants to come up for a messy moment, and anyone who participated in the kitty parade yesterday. So all of us, go ahead up and sit down. That's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an exciting announcement. 
About 11 of us came out in the drizzle and the rain yesterday for the Michigan City Kitty Parade. And are you ready? Hold it up nice and high, Reef. Isn't that cool? Not only did we get to share information about Vacation Bible School, Messy Church, the Corey Voss concert, connect with our community. Some of us got to meet and shake hands with the mayor. It was a very exciting opportunity. Or some. But we, <laughs> but we won first place in our category, and we were not the only entry in our category. I will have you know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Awesome job. I wanted to talk, I'm going to turn this into our children's moment, because, you know, it's what I do. I'm going to sit down here. <laughs> I was thinking as I looked at the group of us that were at the Kitty Parade yesterday, I was thinking about our theme for church today is home. And home is kind of, I'm on the bottom step here, I can't quite get, like, settled. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> Our theme is home, and home is kind of a fun word for me because if you, guys, if you don't know, me and uh, Mr. Chris and Billy have lived in 14 different houses. And she's not a Methodist <laughs> minister. And I'm, <laughs> no. We have lived in 14 homes. So I often think about, personally, what makes home home. And I was looking at this group of people in the parade yesterday. Some of them were born and raised in Michigan City. This has always been home. James, Michigan City's always been your home, right? Yep. <laughs> Since he was born and raised. Pastor Nancy came to Michigan City five years ago. I came to Michigan City about five and a half years ago. I've been a part of this church for five years. Reeve and his mom are fairly new to Michigan City, right? They're in a brand new house, well not a brand new house, brand new to you, house here in Michigan City. So I thought about yesterday how fun it was to get to share with them what was their first experience with the Michigan City Kitty Parade. It was like introducing them to our community. And how fun is that when somebody's new to your home to get to introduce them and now they can feel like it's their home. And isn't that how church feels? This is my home. This is my church home because we're all here to love God because he first loved us. Some of us live here. Some of us live here, yeah. In the balcony. Literally here. <laughs> it feels that way. But because we're all here as one family to love God, because of a God that first loved us so much, we're home every time we walk through those doors. Isn't that cool? Every single time you walk into a door. Every single time you walk in the door, you're home. So, James is right. Let's say a quick prayer. Even in a window, if you jump through. Even if you jump through the window, you could be at home, yes. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. And bringing us home. And bringing us home. Amen. Amen. Oh, now I gotta get off this bottom step. Preceding our scripture reading, uh, we will be singing the Celtic Alleluia twice through. Um, if you care to see the notes for it, it can be found in your Faith We Sing books on page 2043, or the lyrics will be on the monitors, but as I say every week, they're really easy, so... <clears throat>
reading from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. When Yahweh was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. Yahweh is sending me to Bethel. As Yahweh lives and you live, says Elisha, I will not leave you. So they departed together for Bethel. The disciples of the prophets in Bethel approached Elisha, asking, Do you know that Yahweh is going to take Elijah from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. Now be silent. Then Elijah spoke. Stay here, Elisha. Yahweh is sending me to Jericho. And Elisha replied, As Yahweh lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The disciples of prophets in Jericho approached Elisha, asking, Do you know that Yahweh is going to take Elijah from you today? Yes, I know too, he said. Now be silent. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. Yahweh is sending me to the Jordan. As Yahweh lives and as you live, said Elisha, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty disciples of prophets stood off at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry land. Once across, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha replied, Let me inherit two-thirds of your spirit, he said. You ask a difficult thing, Elijah said. If you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, not. As they were walking along and chatting with each other, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and cavalry of Israel. And Elisha saw nothing more. Then he took hold of his clothes and tore them apart. Elisha picked up the cloak that fell from Elijah and went back and stood there on the bank of the Jordan. Then he struck the water with Elijah's cloak and said, Where is Yahweh, the God of Elijah? As he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over the river. Our psalm reading comes from Psalm 77, verses 1 and 2, and 11 through 20. We will read this psalm responsively. You may find it on the screen. I cried to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. In the day of my distress, I sought you, Yahweh, and by night I lifted my outstretched hand in prayer. And then I remember your deeds, Yahweh. Yes, I will call to mind your wonderful acts of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and think about all you have done. O oh God, your way is holy. What God is as great as Yahweh? You are the God who worked miracles. You have shown the nations your power. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Israel and their children's children. The waters saw you, O oh God. They saw you and trembled, and the ocean depths quaked. The clouds coursed their waters. The skies echoed with your voice. Your arrows flashed all around. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. And the earth shook and quaked. You made your path through the sea and walked through the mighty waters, yet no one could find your footsteps. You guided your people like a flock of sheep by the hand of Moses and Miriam and Aaron. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. If you 
would stand in body or spirit. may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Pictured on the screen, you see the home that I grew up in. If you look very carefully to the right-hand side behind the orange fencing, there is a brick stoop. And if you look in front of the orange screen, there is a row of rocks. Physically, pieces of the brick stoop, a piece of wallpaper, the banister that we all clung on to as we went up and down the steps, especially on Christmas Eve when we were trying to creep down to see if Santa had been there yet, and a few of the rocks is all that is left of that house. I never realized when it was in its, never in all of its glory, but at least when it had windows and it was painted and it had shingles and a, a good roof and wonderful maple trees, I never realized how much it looked like a face or how much it looked like the pictures of home that I used to draw as a child. You know, just that very front part, the angles, the straight, two windows, and a door, although that was a picture window. The house is no longer there, but the home is. Because we grew up in that home, and we learned things in that home that we carry with us always. One of the things I learned in that home, if you're going to make a mistake, make it big enough to be heard. That would be when I was playing the piano, playing the oboe, attempting to play the saxophone. And I heard it again at school when my father was directing, and he would say, trombones, that was a mistake. I want to hear it so I can correct it. Mistakes were always to be noted and corrected. And then we moved on. Other things that I learned in that home. On the day I joined the church at the age of 12, and my father sent me down with an envelope and a pledge card, and he said, you will do this. You will support your church. Okay, I had no idea that supporting my church meant I would be doing this. But that's what I learned in that home. What I learned in that home is that all people are created to be loved by God. My mother taught English as a second language at what is now Trine University, but at that time was Tri-State. They didn't call it English as a second language. But she ended up with most of the international students, many of whom knew English better 
than we did, but she taught them how to write business letters and, and how to communicate in a way that they could be heard. She would never let us treat the international students any differently than we did anyone else. In that home, I learned that Methodists and Presbyterians could coexist. Even though we were all Methodists by the time I came along. In that home, I learned that Republicans and Democrats could coexist. Even when there weren't options to vote during the primary. In that home, I learned that you could make beautiful music with a couple of sopranos, a couple of warbly altos, and yeah, mama sang tenor and daddy sang bass. And in that home I learned that my responsibility to the world went outside those doors. Today we have a story about Elijah and Elisha. And it seems like Elijah was visiting all of the places that had been home. The Jordan, Jericho. He was rehearsing and remembering all of those pivotal moments within the life of his sense of faith, the dividing of the Red Sea. He was wandering and he was revisiting on the last day of his life. He did it physically. I wonder how many of us do that emotionally as we think about the homes in which we have lived. And Chris and Trish may be the only people other than military who have lived in more houses than I have. I don't know if that is a credit, but I have little things that go with me from house to house. I have a, some of the bricks from this house. And I have some of the rock from that wall. And I have a piece of the wallpaper from the living room in my desk drawer. But if I stay in that memory, if I stay in that space, then I would spend my life living in a parking lot near the hospital because they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. We can't go back. We, can't, we can remember, and that's what Elijah did. He remembered. He remembered his life. He remembered those moments that made him who he was. But he didn't go back. And we cannot go back. We can, try as we might, we cannot make the world our idealized vision of 1950 or 60 or 70. When the pews were filled because all of the baby boomers came and they brought all of their kids and we all built leaky baby boomer additions. Every church I've served that was built prior to 1950 has a leaky baby boomer edition. I don't know what it was about the architects. I don't know what it was about the window makers. We're not going back. And in our attempts to go back, we leave out the people who never are invited to come home. And by coming home, that doesn't really mean 
coming into the sanctuary. It means coming into the community of faith however they get here and being embraced and loved and welcomed. It means walking the streets of Michigan City on a rainy Saturday, hoping that the rain will hold out and wishing that they would just get started so we could beat the rain. There, wasn't, there weren't a whole lot of people there anyway. And then when we got done with the parade, hanging around, wishing they would get to the awards before the rain got there. But there was such a sense of inclusion and diversity in that parade. The, sto the soul steppers were there. And if you haven't heard the soul steppers, they're the, the kids that drum. But you got to have a cadence to walk in a parade, whether you have a band or not. And there were little kids decked out in frilly skirts and people on their bicycles and clowns and people in costume. I hadn't felt like I was home in that way since March of 2020. Next year, I'm going to decorate licorice, and we're going to take the dog award. Just saying. Elisha, poor dear Elisha. You get the, did you get the sense that Elijah really wanted Elisha just to stay back? Give me this time. Did you get the sense that Elisha was rolling his eyes at the other prophets? In one of the other scriptural versions that I read, every time Elisha would say, I know, he would say, I know too, as in, yeah, I got this one. But somehow, Elisha had to be welcomed into that journey that Elijah had taken in order to find a new sense of home. Elisha's home would be different than Elijah's home. The home I have here in Michigan City it's different than the home I had in Lawrenceburg. It's different than the home I had in South Bend. It's different than the home I had in Muncie. And all the way back to this house, which is still my emotional home. How do we prepare a place for home, of home, for people who may or may not ever come into the doors? They used to say, kind of like Field of Dreams, if you open the doors, they will come. Well, just as new generations don't have a clue when I say the movie Field of Dreams, they're not going to come. So how do we create home, a spiritual home, a church home, a fellowship home for people who have never been in home. That's the challenge for the church. That's the challenge for us as individuals. On the last day of his life, Elijah wandered from place to place, 23 miles in all, to remember where God had taken him in his life. What does it mean to go home? Is home a place or a relationship? Is it something we receive or is it something we offer? Is it finding a place with God at the end of our lives or while we are journeying through? Or is it a bit of all of this? To quote my friend, the Reverend Dr. Derek Weber, Elijah wandered the route of the people of God from awareness to contention toward surrender and victory and then came to the end in the presence of the kingdom. 
During the anthem, swing low, sweet chariot. I invite you to think about where you have been in your life, where God is taking you, and how you may invite others to find the same sense of home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. connecting the things we do as a congregation and our missional outreach with the time of offering and prayer. Not only do we thank God and all of you for the generosity of this congregation, we also want to pray for our congregation's mission and ministry. Please remember, however, to look at the expanded stewardship sharing in your insert for more complete announcements, and then take those home as you pray for the ministry of the church during the week. We have ways for you to share your garden flowers and vegetables. See the insert for more information. Today we will continue to receive a love offering for Dustin, Jessica, and Grace Hawks. Dustin, who is Susan's son and Joyce's grandson, is seriously ill. Please make checks out to them. There will be collection plates in the back as you leave. VBS Light of the World 
will be this Wednesday and Thursday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. with a simple meal served both evenings. Ages 4 to 14 are welcome. And then following VBS, Messy Church is on Friday, July 1st. Bring the whole family to celebrate the last night of VBS with a meal and activities beginning at 5 p.m. And join us for a one-night event during Messy Church July 1st at 6.30 p.m. featuring worship leader and Christian Nashville recording artist Corey Voss. This is a free event. A free will donation will be collected. And I'm sure Corey Voss, of course, being the immensely talented son of our own immensely talented Pam Voss. Um, and if you were lucky enough to be here a couple weeks ago when Corey did some of our music during the worship service, I'm sure I don't need to tell you what a blessing that was to have him here and what a blessing his concert on the first is sure to be. So an, an absolute boon for our congregation. Absolutely. Our response to the gospel is in our prayers, our actions, and our offerings. You may make your financial offering by placing your gifts in the box toward the back of the sanctuary, by mailing them to the church office, using the portal on the church website, or having a direct deposit made from your bank. As Joe comes around with a microphone, please share your joys and concerns with the congregation. Those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, please continue sharing in the chat. And while Joe is moving, I will share with you that Stephen Mast uh, messaged me last night. His parents are both having surgery next week. So prayers for Katie and Fred Mast. And Stephen, as he also is getting ready to go on a music trip at the end of the week. We have an Aunt Anita, who is my dad's sister. Um, sometime early in the year, she had um, hip surgery to replace her hip after she fell. Um, recently, she found out that the bone is not, the rod is not in place, and she has had to do it all over again. This week, she did it. Um, so please pray for her. She needs help in her recovery. And uh, Karen just reminded us that that gal who's undergone two hip replacements is 94 years old. So, holy smokes. Uh, I have a concern for our government as our, specifically the Supreme Court in regards to taking away women's rights in this country. So I guess I'm asking for a prayer for the women of this country as we work on trying to rectify this situation. I would personally like to thank everybody that's done so much to get this going for Corey's concert. Uh, it, he loves this church. He loves everybody here. He is going to be singing some new song of his new EP as well as some old songs that he has written with some really famous people. And he just thinks he pales in comparison to where they are or who they are. Also, we're gonna have a special guest, and I'm gonna massacre his last name because I always do. His name is Cliff Gilliard. He has got a master's degree in the viola, and he's going to be joining Corey. So this is, he just blew my socks off. when I, My mouth just dropped open. I said, oh my gosh, and he can sing too. He's just multi-talented. He's Corey's very good friend. So please tell everybody, and let's give him a great warm welcome. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to ask for everybody's prayers to cover our Vacation Bible School this week. Prayers that we reach some, um, hopefully some new families in our community, and that we have a great time with the kids that we have, and really reach their hearts with the message that Jesus is the light of the world, and we are the light of the world. Um, so just prayers for a, a great VBS. This is our first time back in person in three years, so we're excited. Um, and secondly, just thank you, all of you who have continued to pray for my dad. We had a great appointment Friday. We had a long appointment Friday with all of the transplant specialists, and we are on track 
for a bone marrow transplant potentially um, by the end of August. Um, so the, the prayer right now, I would ask that a um, marrow donor is found quickly so we can stay on track. So just continued prayers for my dad. Thanks. And I would like to ask continued prayers for my sister Margie, who is healing from the hip replacement finally, but has contracted COVID for the second time. So just hold her in your prayers. She's having to change her infectious disease protocol and all of that. So. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, we do pray for the leaders of this country, those who are elected and those who are appointed, for those who lead state governments and city governments and township governments, that we may understand this is a home for all sorts of people with all kinds of diverse needs. We pray for them. They have hard and difficult and important jobs. We pray for the leaders of the church, our church, our denomination, and the world church as we continue to think differently and we forget to love alike. We pray for those who've had surgery this week or who are facing surgery, for Anita, for Fred and Katie. We pray for Corey's concert that people may come and hear and find a home, not just in our space, but in our community and in Corey's music. We pray for the children who will come to VBS and for those who are leading it that they will have patience. We pray for my sister and for all who continue to get COVID. And we are grateful for the research and the treatment that is available now that was not available two years ago. As we move into this 4th of July week, may we remember that we have multiple homes. Help us choose wisely which home we will live in. This we pray in Jesus' name, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
don't think you need my permission, Pastor, but sure. Oh, I just wanted, so I need the mic. Just a reminder from the man who wrote the words to the summons, which we are about to sing, this is not a dirge, it is a dance. So get your ribbons and dance. Excellent. And this dance is found on page 2130 in our Faith We Sing books or lyrics on the monitors, The Summons. Go forth in the name of the one who calls you home and challenges you to be home for other people. Go forth in the name of the one who calls us into community so that we may go forth and build community. Go forth in the name of the one who summons you. Amen. 